Hello artist, today I'm gonna to introduce you to the work of Alex Beard. He's an artist, author, and illustrator who lives in New Orleans. He paints lots of animals, uh, particularly African animals. He has spent a lot of time in Africa. It's a place very close to his heart. When he was a kid in Africa, he actually had a pet monkey. Uh, and that might show up in a book that I'm gonna to read to you. Uh, he's also very involved in an organization he started called the Watering Hole Foundation that raises money for organizations saving endangered species. He's also written several books, one of which he has very kindly given me permission to read to you today. So let's get started. Hi guys, it's Miss Mac, and today I wanted to share a book with you that is written and illustrated by one of my favorite artists. His name is Alex Beard, and he lives in New Orleans. I'm really hoping that this book gives you some great inspiration for artworks that you might want to create. Okay, are you ready? The book is called Monkey See, Monkey Draw. At the foot of Mabuno Hills in Africa, a troop of monkeys lived in an old baobab tree. They chattered and swung from the branches and liked to play games. The monkeys played Ring Around the Rhino they played pin the tail on the warthog. Their favorite game was monkey in the middle, which they played with the last baobab nut from their ancient tree. In the hills where the monkeys played, there was a cave. It was very dark and the monkeys never went inside. Let's go inside. No way. It could be dangerous. It could be full of horrible beasts or worse. One day, elephant came to visit. Can I play? Elephant in the middle, the monkeys cheered. The monkeys tried to keep the baobab nut away from elephant, but elephant was too big. He easily plucked the prize from the air. Excited, elephant launched the baobab nut. It bound away and rolled into the cave. <gasps> the baobab nut is lost. The game is ruined. What will we do? It's so dark in there. Silly monkeys, elephant said. Don't be afraid of the dark. Come with me and I'll show you there's nothing to fear. With a few curious and brave monkeys clinging to his back, elephant walked into the cave. Inside, the cave was cool and musty. It was hard for elephant and the monkeys to see. After a few moments, their eyes adjusted to the dark. What they saw amazed them. The walls of the cave were decorated with paintings of animals. Each picture was made from a handprint or a footprint. Elephant looked down at his own feet. He stepped in a muddy corner and pressed one foot against a clean spot on the wall. Using his trunk, Elephant smudged the print until it looked like a monkey. The monkeys were delighted. They forgot their fear of the dark and the lost nut. Jumping up and down, they shrieked, a new game. The monkeys ran outside to show their friends. They called this new game, Monkey See, Monkey Draw. Before long, a few monkeys bickered over whose painting was best. Soon, all the monkeys were arguing. As the monkeys squabbled, it began to rain. Their paintings dripped and ran and turned back into mud. The monkeys sat in the rain. All our work is gone, they said. Whose painting was best? Who won the game? Elephant walked out of the cave with the lost baobab nut. No one is the winner, he said. It's not a contest. His feet covered in fresh mud, Elephant stomped down on a clean slate and started to draw. The monkeys got up to join in. Soon they were all laughing and painting in the sun. The monkeys still live in the baobab tree, but they're no longer afraid of the dark painted cave. They also still play games to win, but after a good rain, when there's plenty of mud on the ground, they paint and draw just for fun. Did you see all the hand and footprints in Alex Beard's book? He used fingerprints for the monkey's heads. He used his hands and his son's hands and feet to make lots of the other illustrations that are in the book. All right, here's what you need for today's project. Some paper, 
some washable markers, no Sharpies, and some wet wipes. You're gonna use the wet wipes to uh, clean your fingers off in between because we're making fingerprint animals today. Now there is no limit to the different critters you can create. I'm gonna show you how to make a couple and then you can experiment and use your imagination to create your own. Okay, let's get started. So I'm gonna use the washable marker and I'm gonna color my thumbprint. I'm gonna use a gray to start with. All right, press it down, color it one more time so I get nice lots of ink on there. And I'm gonna use the same gray marker to add some feet, maybe a little tail, a neck, which is a little bit skinnier than I had anticipated, but oh well. A little trouble putting the cat back on the marker because it's upside down, silly me. I'm gonna use the black marker to add some details. And of course, we've created an elephant. All right, let's see what else we can do. I'm gonna use orange this time. Uh, don't forget to wipe your fingers off with the wet wipes in between. So what am I gonna make with the orange? Well, it's kind of a brownie orange. And I'm gonna add some ears. I bet you know what I'm gonna make now. It is gonna be a monkey. So I'm gonna add skinny arms, skinny legs. I'm gonna use the black marker to add in the details for his face. Now, for some reason, I feel like my monkey is dancing. So every dancing monkey deserves a tutu. You can add all kinds of crazy little accessories to the critters that you create. The only limit is your imagination. All right, what else can I create? Hmm, let's start with pink. What could I make that's pink? Start with my thumbprint, and then I'm gonna use my baby finger to make a smaller print. I bet you guys can figure out what I'm making now. It's a flamingo. All right, he's got that bent leg and some little ripples where he's standing in the water. And uh, let's see, one more. Uh, again, I'm using orange, and I, uh, oh no, it's, I guess it's red. It's a ladybug. There you go. Okay, now you can take all of these different critters that you can create and put them in a picture. I actually did this in marker, and I used fingerprints for the leaves as well. And then, admittedly, I did use a crayon to color in some of the extra colors. It would be really great if you could take the critters that you created and turn them into a storybook of your own. That would be so much fun. All right. Have fun. Keep creating.